that's where we would have come out. That's just nuts. Impossible. Yeah, and then that huge lip right here. No way. Google! It is like right there. Oh, can you feel the tension? The excitement. We got marsh. We got bushwhack. We got tree holes. Oh, look at that. It's almost like nobody's ever walked out here in at least eight years. Man, we gotta climb another hill. Oh, took us all day to find this cache. Hello, the internet. It is October 12th and we are going on an adventure. It is the Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend and I am here with Young King Cole. And if you have watched the recent video where we were in Rockwood Conservation Area, climbing, scaling this huge rock wall, that is the cash owner. So we have just crossed over into Quebec, or Quebec, as they say around here. We are now in foreign lands. This cache we are going to was published eight years ago. It is a four and a half difficulty five terrain cache that is intended to be done by canoe. And we have a canoe just in case because there is an alternate method of getting to it by road, by logging road. And this thing is way out in the wilderness. So we're not quite sure what the terrain is going to be like, but I think it's going to earn its four and a half five terrain. And it has not yet been found. And for all we know, it hasn't even been attempted yet. There's no logs on it. We tried to contact the owner and there was no reply either. So this is going to be quite a fun little expedition. If we're gonna be driving on logging roads, we've got rain and there's probably gonna be mud. The alternate method is just to hop into the water and then portage a little bit to the next lake over. And it's fairly simple. We're kind of surprised that the cache has not been found yet. It's still sitting there with the big red FTF flag. We have a CB radio just in case we need it. We've told people where we're going. Ah, uh, yeah, I told them. I told like other people that I was going to Quebec, but yeah. they're, they're like, oh, where, where in Montreal are you going? Or are you going to Montreal or Quebec City? <laughs> hunting season so it's a good thing you brought your orange yes and I will be holding your hand <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though that the, the nature out here the forest the trees there's so much color this is the time of year to go on a road trip out in the wilderness Woo! This month for October, the Geo Challenge from Cache Advance and Geocaching Vlogger is to find a cache that's at least difficulty or terrain of four or more. I think this is going to qualify. Oh, look at this view. Beautiful. So the road trip to get to this cache from where we are in Ontario is about an eight hour drive. The last segment is logging roads and rough terrain. And so the recommendation is having a large vehicle, like a pickup truck, or a four-wheel drive. I learned on the way here that we have a two-wheel rear drive, so hopefully the truck will suffice. And we're heading down into a lesser class of road. Continue our straight. first, our first adjustment. <laughs> we really lost uh, a lot of quality. Uh huh. And we are still 36 kilometers to the last road. This could just be a transitional road though as well, so we'll see. So this cache is just uh, northeast of Temiskaming in Quebec. It's like back country. It's gonna be dense and, oh, look at the size of that rock. Oh man. This is so rough. Oh, this is killer on the tires it's gotta be. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the camera as steady as possible. Holy. The How truck much? did not like that. Yeah, and we got 2.8K until the next turn. It does look a little rough, but I think we probably... Oh, that yeah. That was the worst of it. I see 2.37. Glad you've got the clearance. <laughs> Alright, so we seem to have had our first little hitch. Google had us coming down this road. It was nice and clear, and then suddenly that. This, this is like a hiking trail here. There, there's a couple of, it's, oh man. And there's another two kilometers of that. I think we might, 
we're gonna be backtracking to try to stay on the main road, but I think that's the way to go because this is transitioning from one one off road to another off road. It's just ridiculous. So we are certainly earning the difficulty for this cache. Google had us going up this road up here and that was way too rough. So we're gonna attempt to come the long way around, which should hopefully be much simpler and much nicer on the vehicle. All right, that is looking a lot more doable. And we are coming up to the exit where we would have come out somewhere just up there. Whoa, that's it. There's nothing, oh, there it is. That's where we would have come out. That's just nuts. Impossible. Yeah, and then that huge lip right here. No way. Google! We'll find out what the roads are actually like compared to what we see on the GPS. <laughs> And we get to be surrounded by many little lakes off to the side, past the trees. And you get to listen to our very bad French accent. In 200 meters, continue straight. We ain't going nowhere but straight. Oh, look at this. And we have a McDonald's somewhere <laughs> up here. Onward. Puppy. So this is turning out to be much more difficult than expected because yet again, another road that looks fairly major has turned into sharp, rocky ATV type trail, which <laughs> is not very promising. We have one other option to get back to a main road. This is pretty difficult. Oh, this is so tough. Ooh. We have arrested. All right, we are coming up to our final turn. This is our last opportunity to make it to uh, the, the last road, which is the one we're not sure of. We've got a right turn and the road is not looking too bad. It's still looking pretty clear for now, but it's another 23 kilometers before we get to where we can put in if we need to with the canoe. So, fingers crossed. We are at the bridge. With a nice little creek. It feels like it's getting dark, like it's much later in the day. But there is kind of a darker cloud looming overhead, so hopefully we don't get a whole bunch of rain when we get there. We are approaching the intersection to the final road where we may or may not be able to take the truck. Whether we take the canoe or hike four kilometers through the wilderness. <laughs> we Entrance to our final logging road is just ahead. It's right there, right there. How does that look? A to B. Uh. Well, it's not too dense and it's not rocky. Look at the, the dip down there. Yeah, it's center line. Yeah, that's. Uh, that does not sound good. No, that center stretch is going to be a killer. Yeah, I won't. That doesn't look too bad. I mean, if this trail is like this the whole way, then that could be easily walkable. It's not like. Yeah. Bushwhacking. All right. So after a whole lot of deliberation, and arguing and fist fighting, we've decided on taking the canoe instead of hiking the 4K. <laughs> I mean, look at this lake. It's beautiful. There's somebody else out there on a boat, probably fishing. This is gorgeous. So we are setting off on leg one of the canoe section, and it's about, uh, what was it, 2.3K-ish? Yeah. 2.3K to the portage. So that other boat way up there. We're hoping that's not a bunch of other geocachers aiming to go for the FTF. So based on the map that we used, it shows this beach right here and our waypoint for the portage is just on the other side. All right, so we found the portage. Cole there is doing all the dirty work. 
My foot fell asleep and I couldn't feel a thing. So I get to carry a whole bunch of stuff. Portage, we found there was a little bit of a pink marker, so it's there. We'll have to mark a waypoint for future adventurers. This little portage feels like it's all uphill. It's like we're climbing another mountain here. The master. And there is water. There is water. I see water. You can practically see the cash from here. <laughs> All right, we are done portage number one of about 300 meters or so. And we are within 500 meters, of, 500 meters. of uh, this cash that is hopefully still there. It is like right there. Okay, so we're kind of scanning the uh, shoreline here for a place that looks optimal for putting out. And we might be heading off to that little spot there because it's kind of empty and clear. There is a portage here, but I don't think it's very often used. There is a opening there and we just passed it. You can see the trail go all the way up. This is it. We are here. We are here. This is the final stretch. Oh man, it's so beautiful here. All right, this is it. We are 96 meters. My autofocus is on. A little blurry around the lens, but we're good. We good. This is an eight-year-old unfound cache. Hopefully FTF. 62 meters. It is a, uh, I think he said it was a plastic container. Where plastic container. And the hint is it contains a logbook. <laughs> <laughs> what a hint. I think we're going off to the left shortly. Oh, can you feel the tension, the excitement? We got marsh, we got bushwhack, we got tree holes. Oh, look at that. It's almost like nobody's ever walked out here in at least eight years. Nice and soft ground here. We got 18 meters. Now the other question is how accurate his coordinates are. We will find that out presently. We've got five meters now, four, three. Just up here. There. Okay. Did you mark a waypoint? <laughs> right there. So this is the time when you have to break out the geosenses. This is an eight-year-old cache that was placed and has not been attempted or found. And a lot of the time these caches, even with great GPSs, could still be out by 10, 15 meters. So, where, if you were a cash owner, would you hide a cash? All right, so we are kind of focusing our attention right here you're zeroing out with these couple of big rocks. Thinking like a cache owner, there's gotta be some kind of uh, object or marker to help the cache owner know and remember where the container is. And this is right where we're both zeroing out. And it's quite obvious. There's lots of rocks, lots of smaller rocks under the big ones. We've been digging around, no luck yet. After eight years though, there can be a lot of growth, a lot of uh, movement, fallen trees, growing trees. It's really hard to tell what it could be like now compared to when it was placed. This is a tough one. There's a stump, a beautiful stump with nothing in it. Well, it is a sad, sad time. We have searched and we have scoured and we have scraped, we have dug, we have expanded, and searched some more, sunk into some holes, and uh, oh, that's, were those gloves good before? Yeah, brand oh, new. wow, <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, so we have taken a lot, done a lot, and sadly, we must accept the frowny 
It's a risk going for an eight-year FTF, especially when it hasn't been checked and when nobody else has tried, and it's out in the wilderness, and you really don't know the owner and how they hide and what their quality is for their hides. But that means it is time to head home. Sad face, but happy times. Happy time. Hey, this was a fun adventure. <laughs> and now for the pep talk. We are outside and we are being active and we are exercising and exploring and enjoying nature. You can do it too. <laughs> And here we go again, portage, back to the truck. But we're gonna get some caches, because we got it all the way out here, we gotta get some caches. That was a little slippery. So we're just admiring the beautiful mix of pointy-tipped coniferous pines along the tree line here and the uh, yellows and reds of the deciduous. So relaxing. So we are deciding what to do with some good old fashioned sandwiches and kielbasa and cheese. <laughs> uh, oh bread. <laughs> Well, if there's one thing we can say about this, we have earned this DNF for sure. I mean, that was a good attempt too. That was, uh, probably spent, what, two hours searching, something like that? Yeah. I think it was. Ah, some things just aren't meant to be. Stupid karma, what did we do? Today? No, we are not gonna end this day on a frowny. We're going to find a cache. We're gonna find a difficulty or a terrain for or more, and we're gonna have a good time. Well, there's our event for the night past the guy who hit a moose. Fortunately, we couldn't see the moose, but it was thrashing around in the wood and they're waiting for the cops to arrive so that they can get some reports and somebody has already claimed the meat. <laughs> Probably taking a breath right now and then he's gonna thrash again. And this whole front corner section is gone. <laughs> Duct tape, oh man. That's nuts. All right, we are doing this. We are going for our five terrain three difficulty replacement backup cache and this is going to be an interesting one because it is black this one has a bit of a bushwhack to get to and hopefully this one does not turn into another dnf <laughs> what is the best route Big rocks. Gotta watch and not slip. And we are heading down towards a river. Okay, so he's found the fence. We are going to earn this challenge. I wonder why it's a five terrain. Maybe you're supposed to do it by water. <laughs> oh, the glow of the sky. He's in the rock. <laughs> oh, rock hides? That was actually pretty good. It's not a high bank. Is that it? That is the cache! Woohoo! Awesome! Alright, we have our three difficulty five terrain. Show challenge complete! Woohoo! Wonder if anybody can hear us down here. <laughs> Under Highway 11. 
<laughs> it is not an FTF. <laughs> this is an awesome location. At night. Oh, it's creepy. What is down there? It is an abyss. Spoiler alert! All right. <laughs> Watch my footing. Yeah, well, that's probably pretty steep down there. Yeah. That incline. Woo. Loose rocks. Oh, there, we're earning the terrain. <laughs> Three, five. Man, we gotta climb another hill? Oh. This is a difficult one. It took us all day to find this cache. Well, that was quite the adventure, and we tried for the four and a half, five difficulty in terrain, first to find after eight years, but unfortunately, that was a failure. But we did get a replacement cache, and that was a three difficulty, five terrain, which still qualifies for the Geo Challenge. That was fun, that was an adventure. Uh, if you haven't done Great it yet. Cache, too. Oh, yeah. And so, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. What's the oldest FTF that you found? The longest FTF? Comment below. I think that's it. So again, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't below with the little button down in that corner over there or down below with the big subscribe button, you know, all that stuff. Ring the bell so you get notifications, etc., etc. And on that note, cheers to a good day. Cheers. A great weekend and happy caching and excellent adventuring. Oh yeah, baby, first, first to find. find. And the colors. The colors. The colors. The colors. <laughs> that was a successful good readjustment and we are back on the road and the road since this is another another old thing and uh black witch and got back. You're gonna be all windy. <laughs> what was the name of this lake again? Lack Five Third or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Granite. Stone. Alright, 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 alright. We have alighted. What the heck? Stupid karma, what did we do to this? Ah. It's good to be back on the road before it's too dark. <laughs> that is a major highway. <laughs> and stuff.